Hi everybody and welcome to today's video, how to take the stress out of creating your 2018 Instagram report. Thank you so much for signing up and taking time out of your busy end of year schedule to be here today. Um, and thanks if you actually came to the webinar yesterday that didn't really get off the ground because there was a software issue. Um, so that's why I'm posting this um, as a YouTube video today instead. Um, so today what we're going to learn is how to put together a fuss-free Instagram report that will impress whoever it's designed to, whether that's a big client or your boss. Um, so before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you who haven't been here before. And my name is Gemma, I'm the Customer Education Lead at Iconis Square in Berlin, and I'm responsible for keeping up all our customers up to date and in the know about Iconis Square, Instagram and Facebook. And this is my fourth webinar, so I'm getting kind of used to it, um, apart from yesterday's mishap. <laughs> Um, you can contact me um, after this if you, video if you have any questions um, at Gemma at Icon Square, or you can also reach out to me on Instagram at Gemma O'Leary. So we're going to have a short session this time because I know that this is like by definition the busiest time of the year, so the video will be about 20 minutes long. Um, and I usually like to start things um, just by finding out why everybody's here. So it could be your first time putting together a yearly Instagram report, you're like totally new to this, or you did it last year, and it almost killed your Christmas spirit. Um, I thought, I, I know these days a lot of social media managers are overwhelmed with like different metrics and not knowing what their clients want to see, but I'm guessing that this goes for everybody. You wanna get this report out of the way so that you can enjoy Christmas with your family and friends. Um, so whatever stage you're at with your report, I'm going to go through some key points about differ differentiating your report depending on who it's intended for, the key metrics that you should include depending on what your objectives were for the year, and due to popular request, I'll also be giving you some tips on what most people find the most difficult about reporting, competitor benchmarking and spinning that data in your favour. I'll end with a quick tour of the exports and reports section of Icona Square on our new redesign and show you how easy it is to create ready-made reports there so you don't spend the entire month of December drowning in a homemade spreadsheet. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, just like your content strategy itself, creating a good report depends on knowing your audience. So if you're a freelancer or you work for an agency, the chances are you'll be reporting to a client who might not have an in-depth knowledge of social media. It's probably why they hired you in the first place. So they might not have the time to scour through pages and pages of in-depth performance data. That's why for a client report, it's time to put your design skills to work and create either a PowerPoint or a Google Slides presentation like this one, because if I can do it, anyone can, or a PDF packed full of charts and images of your best performing posts. So with a client, it's really important to walk the fine line between not bogging them down with over granular data, but at the same time, proving that their investment in you is worth it. Um, and I was thinking that a really cool idea this year would be to download one of those top nine Instagram apps. Um, I just downloaded the one that's actually called Top Nine. Um, and then using the photo grid that they send you um, as the front cover of your report, I think that actually looks really nice. Um, and it's your, it's your best performing post as well, so you can give your client like a really nice, clean overview. Um, on the other hand, if you were doing social media as part of a marketing team or at a small business, your boss hopefully recognizes your worth already, but I think they would appreciate a more in-depth look at the results generated by your strategy this year and how it aligned with the overall objectives of your department and the company as a whole. And if you're doing a spreadsheet, guys, don't forget to include last year's results as well because reporting on your performance is like no good if you've got nothing to compare it to. But first of all, you need to wind it all the way back and ask yourself, what were those objectives? Did your client tell you what they expected from you in 2018? Did they give you clear instructions on what they wanted your social media strategy to achieve? If they did, you know exactly how to structure your report. But if they didn't, then you might be in a better position than you actually thought, because a lack of parameters will allow you to really emphasize your achievements and downplay what you weren't so successful at if your client or boss never specifically mentioned that. But if you did have clear objectives, these will fall broadly into one of two categories or possibly a mixture of both. Um, and those are brand marketing and performance marketing. So brand marketing focuses on building brand awareness and identity and um, driving engagement, expanding your reach among your target audience on social media. So think sort of like reach engagement and also what people are saying about you online. 
And just like a client report, brand marketing also suits a PDF format and a fairly kind of broad visual high level scope. So we're just going to start with the four most important metrics to include in the brand marketing section and how you can kind of visualize each of them for a report. So we're going to start with the obvious one, which is follower growth. Um, most clients, the vast majority, will want to see how much you manage to grow their account. So it's a very good idea to start your report with the ultimate vanity metric. So even if they don't get past the first page, they'll hopefully have something to smile about. If you haven't been using a reporting tool and you're just creating the chart yourself with a tool like Excel or online chart tool, it might be best just to have like 12 data points on the chart, one for each month. Um, and I pulled this chart um, from Iconosquare. So all our graphs um, and charts are downloadable in PNG form. So you can just really quickly export them from the platform and insert them into your report, pretty much just as I've done here with my Google Slides presentation. Um, so you barely have to do any work yourself, which is great if you have Iconosquare. Um, and out of all of these new followers, your client will also want to know how many are actually going to see your content. Um, so if you haven't been using a reporting tool like Iconosquare to track your reach and impressions, like in this chart here, um, you, Instagram Insights actually only lets you see your total reach for the past week, which is a really, really annoying limitation. Um, but you can manually, they let you go back post by post um, for the entire year. Um, so you can, if you have time, manually calculate your post reach by adding up um, all of the all of the reach on your posts and then dividing it by the number of posts. But I'm guessing that you really don't have time to go that far. So what I would suggest is sort of scrolling down um, to sort of the middle um, where you'll see kind of the images that got median reach, add a few of those together and divide it by that number and you'll get a sort of like average, an average of an average, I like to call it, because <laughs> I don't think anyone has time to go back through every single post. Um, but it will also teach you to be more prepared next year. And you can do the same with the most engaging posts and you can uh, tot up your engagement rate and your engagement on reach manually if you need to. Um, I've actually left the uh, equations on the screen and um, just in case you've forgotten those. Um, engage, as far as I know, Iconosquare is actually one of the only tools that offers engagement on reach, which is um, how many people engage with your post divided by the number of people who saw it. Um, but if you, if you do include it, I think it would really impress your client and show them that you really know your stuff. Plus, it's higher than engagement rate, so it'll make you look really good, even if they don't know what it is. <laughs> and if you have all the averages of the metrics included in this equation, like your average likes, comments, blah, 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 over the year, you can get, you'll be able to get the average yourself for the year very easily. And then the last thing that we're going to look at from brand marketing is sentiment. And this could be labeled as a little bit more like subjective or qualitative than the metrics we've looked at so far. So if you haven't been using um, a sentiment tracking tool, like I know some people use um, mention or social bakers, you can search for your hashtag on Instagram to see what sort of conversations people have been having about your brand, or you can check your mentions as well. Um, and sentiment is really like the storytelling element of your report. So it's how you're going to tie all those numbers together to create a coherent narrative of your brand's performance in 2018. Um, and if you've had any uh, follows or shout outs from celebrities or big brands during 2018, here's where I would include them and like sprinkle a little magic into your report. And this screenshot here. I took from Iconosquare's advanced plan. That's where you can, we have a tags and mentions feed that pulls through all your mentions and captions and tags and photos so you can see exactly what kind of love your brand is getting, which is really nice. Um, so that's the, it for brand marketing. And brand marketing really tells the why of your Instagram story. But to dig deeper into the how, um, you sort of have to report on your clicks traffic and ad spend, which is generally the most boring part of the social media manager's job. Or maybe you love it. Let me know in the comments if you're like a performance marketing fanatic and you just love ads like Don Draper. Um, performance marketing metrics usually requires more of a spreadsheet vibe. Um, so if you're working with something more visual, a good idea is to uh, insert some tables like this to present the data neatly. Also, 
especially if you're um, inserting the tables into like a PDF or a PowerPoint, it can look kind of messy with 12, like one for each month. So I always think that it's better to divide things up into quarters and get an average for each quarter. Um, a lot of businesses think in quarterly terms anyway, and it just kind of makes it look a little bit cleaner. And um, so I've just given a nice little example here of a cute little pink table that you could insert. Um, so a big part of performance marketing on social media is uh, involves driving traffic back to your or your client's blog or website. And that's usually with the end goal of creating, uh, turning a prospect into a customer. So if you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, you probably know that one of the easiest way to do this is to add a swipe up link to your story, which will take your potential customer out of Instagram and back to your, your site or whatever site you choose to link to. Um, so if you've incorporated those story links into your strategy this year, which I hope you did, if you've had the opportunity to, you can only do it if you have over 10K followers, so I know not everyone will. Um, I hope you've been keeping track of them because again, Instagram insights, why you always let us down. It only shows you a total as far back as 14 days. So again, you have to click on each individual story and check the link clicks there. But if you have been keeping track and you do have the numbers, um, and you want to calculate the click-through rate of your stories, you can divide the number of clicks by the number of impressions. Um, I've given an example here at the bottom um, of getting 200 clicks, 1,000 reach, and 20% CTR. And then if you've used a UTM to track how many downloads or acquisitions happen directly from Instagram traffic, you should include that too, definitely. Um, and these are all like very important numbers, of course, but I would also make sure, as I mentioned, you know, the report is supposed to tell a story. So I'd also definitely include information on what kind of links your followers swiped on the most. Were they blog posts, webinars, your online shopping site? Your report is a way of telling your client or your boss what worked this year and what didn't. So I would make that easy for them by comparing the different tactics that you used. And remember, you're also doing this report for yourself and you might find some insight you overlooked during this crazy busy year. Um, so as I mentioned already, most companies are using Instagram as part of a greater marketing goal and their Instagram efforts don't exist in a vacuum. But I think that these days, like especially as a social media manager, um, and especially if you're working for a client, you're so focused on getting those likes and comments rolling in that you kind of forget to check in on whether Instagram is actually serving its purpose, whatever that was to begin with. So something to check in on regularly um, and definitely to include in your report is how much attention you've been getting through the contact buttons on your Instagram profile, like the call, email, get directions if you're a brick and mortar store, and of course, how many website clicks you've been getting as well. Because these numbers are really where the like brand marketing and performance marketing intersect and show you how the amazing content that you've been putting out and the reach and engagement you've increased this year have actually turned into cl clients and clicks and acquisitions for your client and your company. And um, so you should be really proud of these numbers and you can find them all in Instagram insights, but these are some screenshots that I grabbed from Iconosquare because we actually have a dedicated section for tracking all the activity on your profile and um, it's called profile activity. And um, so if you decide to get the free trial or buy a plan at the end of this, and um, you can find that all in there. Um, and the last thing that we're gonna mention is how to report successfully on your ad spend. We don't have time today to go over the different stats that you get from every advertising platform. So today I'm just gonna um, use metrics from Facebook Ads Manager because I know that's probably one of the most popular ones. Um, I'm sure a lot of people watching use that. Um, and I just, yeah, if, if you've only ran a few ads this year, um, you might fit them all into a small table. Or if you've run an ad like almost every week, again, I would recommend the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Um, and then kind of like condense them like that and um, get averages. Um, and what, but what I mostly wanted to remind you is that it's just not necessary to include every single ad metric that Ads Manager gives you on your ads. Individual likes and comments on ads don't really mean anything unless that was the objective that you were going for. You need to focus on the results that you set for your ad and how many of those results you actually got. Because at the end of the day, like that's what your client or boss are going to care about. So Facebook Ads Manager gives you impressions, result type, or objective, number of results, and result rate. And you can pull those directly from that report and then add just two columns yourself. Um, how much you spent on the ad and the cost per click, which is like the real return on investment on your ad work. So this is going to be what your client is zoning in on. And you can get this number yourself just by dividing the cost of the ad 
by the number of results. So cost per click, $1.42. Um, so that's it for performance marketing. Um, thank God. <laughs> now we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic when it comes to reporting, which is competitor benchmarking. And I know what you're thinking, like benchmarking yourself against your competitors can be really tough, especially if they're doing a better job than you. But it's important to place yourself in the context of your market and using a reporting tool like Iconosphere can really help you when you're tracking your competitors because it's like really hard, obviously, to keep track of uh, your competitors' follower growth manually. And your client will probably want to know if you've been growing their account as fast as their competitors have. But if you haven't actually been doing this, you can still get like a good average of your competitors' likes and comments on their most recent posts compared to yours. Um, and, you, and you could also just maybe compare how many followers you have at the end of this year to how many followers they have at the end of this year if you don't have the trajectory. Um, and then you can create your own visuals or spreadsheet to compare. And I just I included um, our competitors comparative table from Iconosquare. And um, just in case you don't use the tool and you want some like inspiration for um, how to how to design um, a table. Um, so as you can see, I'm not performing very well compared to Chanel and Gucci. Um, so the next part I wanted to get to was what to do if you're in the same situation as me in this particular comparison. Well, first of all, if you only have 600 followers, your competitors aren't Chanel and Gucci. Um, that's for sure. But I just, um, that was just a little joke. But <laughs> you have to be kind of creative about finding your edge over your competitors. So and like remember that not every aspect of the 2018 brand story can be shown in these numbers. So your edge could be like how often you respond to comments compared to them, how you handle public complaints or the sentiment surrounding your brand versus theirs. It doesn't just have to be numbers. Just because they've got more followers than you does not necessarily mean that they're doing as well as you in terms of building a brand identity um, or even in terms of um, overall business OKRs. Um, and if your advantage over your competitors is more qualitative than quantitative, I would really recommend including a PowerPoint slide of a SWOT analysis in your report, um, identifying the threats that your customer, that your sorry, not customers, <laughs> competitors represent, and also like the opportunities they haven't taken that you could step into. So, for example, if not if none of them have used video as a core component of their content strategy, then what are you waiting for? That's a gap in the market you can swoop in in 2019. Um, and I think that really show, will show like your boss or your client that you're going the extra mile and that even if you're not doing as well as your competitors on the numbers, you are prepared to make a change, to do whatever you can to catch up with them in 2019. And that actually brings me to my final point in the webinar because a lot of people are afraid that their yearly report, as well as being like a lot of work, <laughs> will somehow reveal all the mistakes that they've made this year and that their performance somehow wasn't good enough. Um, but first of all, it'll probably reveal the opposite because we all remember our failures way more than our successes. But secondly, even if it hasn't been your best year ever, the most important thing is like bumping out your report at the end with some actionable takeaways based on your data on how you're going to use this report to improve in 2019. Because without context, it's just a whole lot of numbers. And that's why I think everyone could benefit from addressing the bullet points on this slide three things you rocked out on Instagram this year, three things you weren't so great at, and how you're going to use the wisdom and guidance contained in the report that you created to make 2019 your best Instagram year ever. And it's totally up to you whether you include this in your report or whether you keep it for yourself, but I would really recommend including in some shape or form what you learned from this year and how you're going to do even better next year. And if one of your resolutions for next year is to make your life easier by investing in a social media tool that can automate your reporting, I would love to show you just how much easier Iconosquare can make the reporting process. Um, so this is um, our lovely shiny new exports and reports section. We just had a redesign on the product, so it's looking really fresh right now. Um, and all you need to do here is uh, press uh, create new export and then on the advanced plan you can choose between XLS report which can be converted to Excel and a very shiny PDF report um, the, and then on the pro plan you just get the XLS reports. So I'm just going to quickly show you what they look like. So this is the PDF report and um, it's actually our yearly report from this year and as you can see um, it's got loads of really nice really visually aesthetically pleasing and um, nice charts and graphs 
and uh, information about your followers. It's very visual. There's like a lot of nice colors and stuff. And you can see like your most liked media um, your most commented media. It's all like broken down for, for your clients in just a really nice visually pleasing way. Um, so it's a great Christmas gift for them. Um, and then the other one that we have is the Excel um, XLS report. And this one's like more of like a spreadsheet template. So as we were talking about, that can kind of work better for like a boss or for performance marketing metrics. Um, it's very numbers focused, um, but there are some, there are photos um, of your media as well in the, in the My Media section. Um, but the really great thing that I love about the XLS report personally is that it, sh it shows you um, the data from the previous year and it calculates the percentage growth um, for you automatically. So you don't even have to do that work yourself. So it's really, really easy to like compare how you're growing and how you're performing year on year. So I just love that feature. Um, and just because it's Christmas, um, we actually have a little Christmas treat for you guys um, today. So we're offering you 30% off all our pro and advanced yearly plans on Iconos Square with the code Xmas18. Um, so you can just enter that at the checkout when you go and buy a plan. And um, I hope that it, that will help you um, put, putting your report together for Christmas. Not all of our data can be pulled historically, um, but some of it can. And if you have any questions about that, you can just shoot me an email or leave a comment. Um, but even with just the downloadable um, charts and everything like that, I think you'll get a lot of help and inspiration um, for your Christmas report if you do decide to buy a plan. Um, so thank you so much for sticking around today, guys. I've loved chatting to you. And if you have any questions about what I've covered, as usual, don't hesitate to contact me via email. Um, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching Iconosphere. I hope everybody has a really, really nice Christmas um, and good luck with your reports. Bye.